Okay, um, today we are just going to go over the new KDP cover template generator. Um, there's a couple of new additions to the questions that KDP asked. It's a lot more complex than it used to be. We used to have three questions that we had to answer in order to generate the template, and now we have seven. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so I'm just going to kind of walk you through this new form and uh, I'm going to set a cover that was previously designed um, at the 6 by 9 size to uh, 5 by 8. So I'm just going to walk you through the steps that I take to do that. All right, so first of all is generating your template from KDP. Um, binding type, now that KDP does hardcover, you have the option between hardcover and paperback. Um, interior type, um, it will most likely always be black and white. Premium color and standard color is if they are printing in, in color on the interior. This has nothing to do with color on the cover. The color on the cover, there's always color on the cover, so you don't have to worry about that. So most of the time it's going to be with black and white unless like it unless it's like a children's illustrated book. Now my suggestions when it comes to color uh, printing is to usually use Ingram Spark. They have better options. Um, and you cannot um, use standard color when you select hardcover. You can only have premium color um, with KDP, whereas Ingram Spark gives you three different color printing options. All right, so interior type, black and white. Paper type, this is where you're going to have cream or white paper. Again, if you choose color, you're only going to have white paper as an option. Page turn direction, of course, it wouldn't be Amazon without trying to throw some question that you just don't understand. This goes back to when CreateSpace used to ask whether the book had a bleed, but they didn't ask whether it had a bleed. It was some off the wall question that even someone with um, years and years of printing experience could never understand why they asked the question that way. So anyway, it's always going to be left to right for most of us. And just think we read left to right, most of us do, and just that's how you should answer that question, how you read left to right. Um, measurement units, so you can choose between inches and millimeters and then the trim size. Okay. And the cool thing now is that you can enter a custom trim size now. You have always been able to print a custom size within a certain range um, through, through KDP, but you always had to create your own template, your own cover template based on the calculations that they give you. Um, but now uh, they will create the template for you for whatever size you want, which is nice. Um, and then page count. Now, <clears throat> used to be, um, KDP only did their templates in increments of 10. So if your page count was 262 and you entered 262 as your page count, KDP would send you a template for 270 pages. Now it is exact. Okay, so we don't have that, you know, two or three page leeway anymore. The page count needs to be exact now. So that's something that's going to trip up a lot of people, all right? So enter the page count, and then you can either calculate the dimensions and set your own template up, or you can download their template, okay? Now I've already downloaded this and have it up on my in Photoshop. Um, now when you download the template, they give you a PDF or a PNG. Now, apparently, the PNGs are set to 600 DPI. This has been throwing people off. The PDF, you can set it to 300 DPI. Mine actually comes up to already 300 DPI. So if you use the PNG, just make sure you change <coughs> the resolution to 300, okay? <clears throat> or just do what I do and use the PDF. I've always used the PDF anyway. Um, so the next thing I do now that I have the template is I go ahead and draw guides out uh, to help me. So I just drag and drop. You, you, you do Control-R 
um, to toggle your ruler bars. And when you have your ruler bars on, you can drag the uh, your guides out. So I just drag them out on the template just so I can, um, I, I don't, some people may just put the template on top and use it that way, but what I do is I just yeah, draw guides um, and use the guides instead of the template. And I try to get exact as possible on the one side. So, and then here, and then here. And then the last few at the bottom. Okay. Now that I have my guides on, um, I'm going to place the cover that I have already designed. And um, it is set to a six by nine. So I need to um, tweak it. So what I do is I just place the embedded file. I don't place a linked file. I place an embedded file and then I click on that and I convert to layers. And uh, Photoshop just converts everything to layers for me. So everything that was in my original file is now in this file, okay? So now, because this was a uh, six by nine, I've got some resizing to do. So I am going to um, transform everything. And because I use a template, I have these uh, guide boxes that are locked. I'm actually gonna delete those out so I can transform the whole, the whole cover. So what I do is I just, um, all right, so now I have another locked layer can't transform a whole group if you have a locked layer inside. So now that I've cleared that all out, I am just gonna go ahead and size this based on where everything should fall. Now, because this is a um, series, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up, oh great. Um, have some old files in here that are linked, so that should get rid of that. I'm getting rid of all my blank layers that I don't need. And that should do. <clears throat> don't be like me and do a poor job of uh, labeling, uh, labeling your layers. Be good and label your layers properly. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just actually going to pull up the previous book. And I want to make sure that I set the where the author name and the uh, words, the type, book title on the spine where it goes to because when they're on a bookshelf together, I want all of them to be lined up. So I need to find my info panel. And what I do is I'll just copy this guide, which is at 0.916. I'm just gonna add a new guide, 0.916. Whoops, wrong way. View new guide. 0.916 and it should be horizontal that was on my other screen all right so i know that my spine okay is going to be here all right and then love I need to change the title because this is one of the original ones and I can make that a little bit bigger. I'm going to see how I have it on this one. Yeah, have a good size bigger. I'll try 20. Okay. And then we are going to Okay, and 
actually going to delete this layer mask and I'm actually going to, um, this is a smart object right now, I'm actually going to convert it to just a regular text layer. <clears throat> delete out all these extras and then I'm going to rotate this and put it on the spine. Oops. One of the things that I recommend doing is making sure you lock your layers. I mean you lock your um, you lock your guides. Um, because you can have a tendency to move them if you're like me. So I don't want to move all the guys that I painstakingly threw out there. Okay. All right. So we are going to bring this here and just kind of center it. I'm a visual center. Now there's one thing that bugs me about this particular font is that when letters join, sometimes it creates like a white area and um, that annoys me. So I have been just going in with a white brush. Let's use small, 100% white brush. Probably make it a little smaller and just fill that in. Okay. All right, and then I will uh, group those and we'll just label it so I know what that is. All right, now let's position the author name in the same location it is it, it is in the other covers. It's at 5.846. So we are going to do a new guide at 5.846. And then we are going to reposition the author name there. Okay. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I already sent this cover to the client before she sent me um, the the full page count um, so I just want to make sure that I position it exactly how I had it so I have this white space over here um, and a little bit of space here so because of the size differences Things are a little different. I think this is going to be good. I think I think it's good where it's at. Um, I think the author name should be a little bit lower. I'm actually going to create a new guide. That's seven seven five one, and we're just going to bring the author name down there. Also want this centered. Um, now, <clears throat> I know you can draw a box and then center it within that box, but what I like to do is I like to actually know where my center guide is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the end of the spine all the way to the end of the trim. So all this is the bleed area. So this is going to be the front of the book. And then what I like to do is I just like to draw a little cheat box. Just do edit, fill, fill it with whatever. And then what I like to do is do a control T and that gives me this a center point and I will draw a guide in the center point. I do this for the front and back covers just because I like having that center guide. Now, when I start uh, covers, I always, I, I use a template and I always have that center guide on. It's just that with this KDP template, I didn't draw a center guide out, so I like to have that. Um, okay, so now we have got the author name. We're going to take the author name and we're going to center it. And um, I'm also going to check, all right, so we have the, I think the uh, title of the book is a bit bigger. So we are going to take all of everything. We're going to take the title and frying pan and chef, chef hat and the whisk. 
and we're going to make it a little bit bigger and make sure it's centered. Um, and then we're just going to see his feet cover the O and the P and the E. So we are just going to make our food truck. So we've got our food truck. Yeah, I did a poor job <laughs> of labeling everything. All right, let's see. All right, so this is an empty rectangle, so we're going to get rid of that. front cover title and I'm going to drop the frying pan down I'm going to drop the whisk down and I'm going to drop the chef hat down so now that's all grouped together um, this is the author name on the spine yeah make sure you label your stuff just make sure it'll make your life a lot easier all right Sometimes I, well, oftentimes I forget. I can delete that box that's not needed. And um, Rachel Hope, I think that's good. All right, so what now I wanna do is I'm going to drop all of this stuff down with, nope, we actually need these to be over the title. So we're gonna move that back up, but I'm going to select the guy, the girl, the sign, and the food truck. And we are going to make them a little bit bigger because we want the guy. He's going to go over the P and the E in this version. Um, only because of the, the dimension, the difference in the dimensions, okay? Now this white space bugs me, but um, I did have like just an outline of this guy on the truck, but the author didn't want it, so we have to deal with the white space. Um, it's still cute. I just feel like my eyes are automatically drawn to that white space. <clears throat> and you know, we could um, bring him over if we wanted. I don't want to bring him so far. since we already have the ebook cover done. All right, so there we go, there's our front cover. Um, and now I'm going to work on the back cover. So for this particular book, uh, this is how we always did the back covers. And I just wanna make sure I have the text frame in the same position, so 1.582. Um, this one is going to be a vertical guide at 1.582. So I need to bring this black line over and extend it so it fits. And then my next one is going to be here, 5.006. View new guide, 5.006. And this is almost in the right spot. Control T, enlarge that. All right, and then actually I'm going to duplicate this one so they'll be the same size. And just move this one over. All right, so I have black guides and these are black so I really can't see the guides so if you ever want to change the color of your guides just go to edit preferences grids guides and slices and you this is the where you will change them so you got to think of what will show up on these colors so I think I am going to choose a light gray I think that will show up um, so I do have that on the right line I'm just going to bring my green box 
screensaver. And I'm actually going to change the color of the screen box. So I'm just going to use a color overlay. And I'm going to select this teal color that is on our truck. And the next thing, let me just double check everything. All right, so I'm, I'm going to put the title over here and we can do some sort of element here. Um, so I am going to select the front cover title group and I'm going to duplicate it and then I'm going to move it and shrink it down. And I need to see where we don't really place it. We place it on that same line. Because I didn't hit enter, it took away what I had done before. All right, um, and then I'm gonna label this back cover title. And then I gotta figure out what we want um, to go here. We may can use our little culinary dude. I need to find where that's at. Yeah, see, here's one where we had our little dude. So we're going to, and we had a window here too. So we're going to put our little dude back on there. Um, so I'm actually going to open up one of my older concepts it's not the one. Okay. And we are going to see if, okay, so he's on the truck. And I'll probably hit it. So I'm just going to take this guy. I just like to keep the covers cohesive and so since on all the other covers we typically have a certain element there this is book four um, I just want to add something there all right so we can actually close some of this mess out um, we don't need this one anymore this was book three and then we're going to close this one out and close this one out. So I think we're good to go. Now I need to place the blurb. Um, so I am one of those cover designers who does the typography in um, it, the, the blurb in InDesign because um, I'm an InDesign nut. I love InDesign. So what I do to get ready for InDesign is I get the canvas size. So the canvas size is 10.903 by 8.25. And I am going to go to InDesign and we are going to do a new document. New document at those dimensions. You know, my something has been weird with my InDesign since the last update. It's like, it's not showing a certain screen. Ah, oh, it's all the way on my far screen. Almost hidden. All right, so now in InDesign, we do a new document. We're going to enter those dimensions and then 8.25, okay? And then what I can do is I can just place that KDP cover that I already set up. Did I not save it? Let me save it real quick. So we need to save this first, of course. So this is, I'm going to say Love on Wheels KDP01. So I know this is set to the KDP template. Um, and then I am going to place that into my InDesign document. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull up Angel Hope 
the previous um, book cover that was done in InDesign. And I'm just going to copy my um, previously set up um, text boxes. Okay, so now I need to add her blurb. So I need to actually look for her blurb, see where I have it. And I'm going to pause this while I do that. Okay, so I have the blurb in a publisher document on the other screen. So I'm just going to copy and paste in what I already have set up. So one thing I like to do is I just like to make sure our hyphens are okay and there's only two so I think we'll be good. Um, and then the last thing I like to do is I like to place the template over and, um, and then I take the percentage down to like 25%. I just want to make sure we have enough room for the barcode, which we do. All right, so now we will save this as in her folder. Book four, and we are going to call this Love on Wheels KDP Cover 01. And I am going to export it as a PDFX1. Now, InDesign, when it exports for PDFX1, and you, if you have anything, maybe you added a graphic after the fact and there's transparency on it, it will leave little white marks around that transparent object. And sometimes those little white lines will show up in the proof, but they will not print. Um, it's one of the negative aspects of using InDesign if you're adding a bunch of things to the cover that way. All right, so here is the final print wrap. I'm gonna send this on to the client so she can have. So I hope that helped you um, learn a little bit about the process.